Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 57. In this training tutorial, we're going to be exploring using our launch control feature found within the NSP software. This is going to allow us to launch consistently at the drag strip and build as much boost as we like on a turbocharged application. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check out how to set up our launch control. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up and working with our launch control using our Haltech Elite system within our NSP software. Our launch control is something that we probably want to implement if we have a drag vehicle and we want to have consistency and repeatability at the drag strip. So when we want to go and get into the staging, staging lanes, we want to stage our car, we're at the beam and the lights drop, you want to be able to accelerate as fast as possible when you're launching your car and you want to be consistent and repeatable at that. Now, the only way to achieve that is to use a two-step or Haltex and call this a launch control. It's going to have a momentary rev limiter when you're in that condition to launch the car. It's going to shut off as soon as the car moves, as soon as the vehicle starts to start to accelerate and to, to move off the line. And that allows you to have that repeatability and consistency. We can go all the way to the floor with our foot. So we can go 100% throttle and allows us to just stay there and we can just either pop the clutch or come off the brake or a trans brake on an auto transmission and allows us to do that acceleration. Now, we have a variety of different ways we can program the launch control, whether we're naturally aspirated, supercharged, or turbocharged. Turbocharged engine, we want to build boost generally at the line to be able to get as much power as possible given the traction circumstances. So depending on your tire and track surface conditions, you may not be able to launch at 30 pounds of boost, but you can probably launch at 10, 15, 20 pounds of boost to get the maximum acceleration in first gear. That's gonna give you that better 60 foot. When we're naturally aspirated, we're simply gonna use a temporary rev limiter with this launch control feature to be able to put ourselves into the maximum torque band or the peak torque band of the engine so we get the maximum acceleration when we're going to launch. So we have to go about programming this differently based on what application we're dealing with, whether it's naturally aspirated or turbocharged, we go after the fuel and spark timing within the launch control differently. And we'll cover both applications here for this tutorial. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at where we can turn on the launch control. We'll take a look at the programming features we have available and the different ways we can program and work with this feature. So the very first thing I'm going to do is move from my fuel tuning page. I'm gonna go over here into my main page here and then I'm gonna jump over into my navigation area. We're gonna go down here under vehicle functions and this is where we're gonna find our motorsport features. Motorsport features are things that are generally gonna use in racing conditions. So looking something like a race timer or a rolling anti-lag or in this case launch control. These are something that we're gonna use in racing conditions. So we're gonna turn on our launch control here and that's what we're covering in this tutorial. And then we're gonna find if we go ahead and just minimize some of these windows here, we're gonna jump under our vehicle functions. We can move down here under launch control and we can start to take a look at the programming. Now, one thing I wanna mention, at this point, I'm gonna assume that you have a vehicle speed sensor, speed source wired into the Haltech and calibrate it. The last tutorial, we actually looked at the process for going through and setting up vehicle speed sensors or wheel speed sensors. We generally wanna have that as, uh, as an input, as a sensor input, for data collection purposes and to be able to use it for things like launch control. We can see that's gonna be right here as one of our options. Now you don't have to have your vehicle speed source or sensor wired into your Haltech. So if you don't have that, that's not a big deal, but you don't have to then, if you don't have vehicle speed, you're gonna to have to tie in a clutch switch or trans brake switch if you're auto transmission in order to turn on or off the launch control. Um, you can also have uh, other options here as we're going to discuss to be able to turn on or off the launch control. But generally speaking, um, vehicle speed is going to be the easiest way to enable or disable the launch control. So let's look at our programming conditions here that we have. On our cut method, we've talked about this when our rev limiter types, this sets the way we're going to be cutting the power to the engine in terms of either spark or fuel. So ignition would be spark cut on our limiter. The injection would be fuel cut on our limiter. We have ignition and injection at the same RPM. That's generally not a great option here. It kind of lays over the engine a little bit too much. There's ignition with injection 100 RPM above and injection with ignition 100 RPM above. These options are decent options. Uh, specifically ignition with injection 100 RPM above is uh, something that I typically choose. What that's going to say is wherever I program my launch control limiter, let's say it's at 5,000 RPM, that will be the point at which I have 100% ignition cut. If I overstep that, let's say to 5100, 
100 RPM above, it'll then cut the fuel injection out. It'll actually cut the fuel off. So we'll have both spark and fuel cut, and it'll really make sure that we have no more combustion in the engine. Um, so that's typically what I choose, although a lot of times I will choose ignition as well, but uh, ignition with injection, 100 RPM above, is a solid option for most applications. Now the cut type here, this is something that you have to decide. You can experiment with this. The soft cut option starts to cut cylinders in a random order and it softens up the way that the limiter is going to be activated. So if we didn't have a- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.